The palace of the Olu of Wari, Agiame Atuashe III, recently announced the proscription of the family title, Ologoshere of Wari, or the traditional prime minister of Wari. This arose from the face-off between the Olu of Wari and the holder of the traditional title, Chief Airi Emami. However, the controversy surrounding the proscription of the title assumed a new dimension when members of the family alleged that pressure was being put on the 100-year-old family head, Pa Jofotan Higson Oporokun, to sign a controversial letter in support of the proscription. The family spokesperson, Mr. Alex Ayengo, in a petition to the Inspector General of Police, claimed that the pressure on Pa Oporokun was capable of causing a breach of peace in Wari, particularly as it involves upturning an age-old order of affairs in the family. But in a swift reaction, a Wari palace chief, Robinson Ario, said the disrobed Ologoshere, Eiri Emami, and a faction of the Ologoshere family have been the ones fomenting trouble since the onset of the succession crisis. More so, in an interview on this program some weeks ago, Amadru Pinnick, president of the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, and indigen of Wari Kingdom, said that Chief Eiri Emami is as ordinary as he is, calling him a mister. At the moment, uh, Yuri is um, as ordinary as I am in the kingdom. He's a mister. And um, there's nothing that is impossible. I just believe that because the uh, our king has a very large heart. He's somebody that, like I told you, is ordained by God to rule. So it's not anything can happen. But the truth is, at the moment, we, have, we, we are very happy with him. We are very excited about it. And I want to correct one impression that there is friction. There's no friction anywhere in land, nothing at all. Even as civilized and exposed as the, the English monarchy, there are still some dissenting voices. But are you still in court? Them. Are you still in court? He's in court, he's in court, he's in court. That's why I don't want to, because it might be subject is he's still in court. But I can tell you, the law for him owns A to Z of all the titles. And he has done what he needs to do. And everybody, 99, I say it every day, 99.99% are all supporting him. Okay. And uh, that Thank I can you. tell you. Joining us now to discuss the aftermath of the prescription of the Olobushere title are Chief Robinson Ario, a lawyer and the Egogo of Wari Kingdom, Mr. Alex Ayengo, spokesperson of the Olobushere descendants, and Dede Mabiaku, Afrobeat musician and son of Chief G.E. Mabiaku, the former Eyashere of Wari Kingdom. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for joining um, us. Good morning to Nigeria. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, Mr. Yengo, you are with us right here in the studio. Maybe we should start uh, with you. Well. I know that the last time you were on this program, you were speaking on behalf of uh, the Ologbushere family and uh, Ayuri Emame, now the deposed Ologbushere of... Uh, of uh, uh, so Hello? Is someone there saying something? Hello? Hello, yes. Welcome. Thank you for Hello. joining us. We're directing our first question Hello, to Mr. Yengo. If you can hear me. Okay. Now, the question I want to ask is, are there any precedents for peop that people are saying the Ulu of Wari has no powers uh, to remove an Ulu Bushere or to even cancel the title? Uh, what is your support for the deposed Ulu Bushere based on? Okay. First and foremost, uh, there is nothing like uh, the deposed Ulu Bushere of worry as of today, 27th of 28th of uh, October 2021, Chief Ayrimi Imami remains the Ulubu Shere of Wari Kingdom. Nobody, and I say nobody in capital letter, have such power to derobe him or remove him from that title, because it is a family title. I hear uh, Amadou Pinik, whose expertise is in sports and not on uh, traditional matter, you know, more of medusome interloping into areas he has no knowledge about. I mean, there are precedents. In fact, to tell you that there are precedents, this is the first time in the over 500 years of Wari Kingdom that an Ulubu Shere is purportedly deposed. First time. That's to tell you that there are no such precedents. 
uh, the Olu does not own all titles. The Olu owns maybe all these social titles. There are some, there are grades in the palace where you have family titles, you have community titles, then you have social titles. Family titles are the titles like Olobo Shere, Iya Shere, Unwagwe, Ojomo, Oshodi, and some others. The Olu of Wari cannot swore moto on his own, make anybody Olobo Shere without recourse to the family. As a matter of fact, it is the family that recommends if the Olobo Shere, if the Olu wants to give out Olobo Shere title or Iya Shere or Unwagwe, he reaches out to the family and tells them that, look, submit name or names or candidates to me from where I will select. That is the culture. That is the tradition. So he cannot on his own, you know, make an Olubo Shere. If you cannot on your own make an Olubo Shere, you cannot on your own remove an Olubo Shere. Shiftency title in Wari Kingdom is held for life by the owner. For life. It is held for life. Particularly those in the Olu Advisory Council, where the Olu Boshere is the chairman of the Olu Advisory Council, is also the chairman of the Wari Council of Chiefs. Once he is given the title as recommended by the, by the family to the Olu, once he's given the title, it is still debt that he will stop being and Olubo uh, Shere. So it is unprecedented. It is strange. And it is against our culture. It is against our tradition. It is against extant law. I, you, uh, Dr. Abati was saying, what is my authority? I give you, there is a book, uh, The Foundation of Shekiri Culture and Tradition. You can check it out. Okay. Written by an eminent uh, judge, Justice Rufus Ugbobine, where he stated manifestly clear in the book that it is until death that Olubo Shere and such other title can cease holding such titles. So it is unprecedented. Thank I can you. tell you, so Ayiri remains the Olubo Shere of the kingdom as far as the family is concerned. Thank you for sharing your position. Mr. Mabiaku, do we have you with us, Mr. Mabiaku? Yes, I am very much with you. Well, thank you for joining us. What's your response to Mr. Ayengo's comments? Thank you. Okay, it's very clear here that, uh, first of all, I want to say that we should not, at this stage in our lives, want to create a situation of uh, debasement of our culture and tradition before the world. It is sad, the chronicle of events over this period, because I, for one, was shocked at the statements uh, made by Amadou Pinik over this period of time. It's, it's unheard of for us to bring our royal matters to public like this. I had always said to my people, royal matter and a sacred matter. All this that they are doing is a parody of our culture and our tradition. Ayiri remains the Oloboshere period. The truth of the matter is this. When somebody comes forth and hurries his way in any way, shape, or form against the norm and tradition of a people and sits on a throne against the wishes of the people, don't polish it and make it a social media matter. It's a sacred issue. And I don't want people doubting what is going on. <laughs> Uh, I wonder where they're heading. There's a case in court, and let them wait for this case, and you'll be amazed what will come out. Okay, uh, let's come to uh, Mr. Robinson. Chief. Chief Robinson, beg your pardon. Chief Robinson, if you can hear me, what's your take on all of this matter going on? Dede um, Mabioku has all, enunciated to this point here. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. First of all, I wish to correct a couple of misconceptions. Um, from the very foundation, 
Um, here, Alex Ayango introduced himself as spokesperson of the Onoko Sheriff family. I would want you to properly position that statement. He is the self-acclaimed spokesperson. He's not the spokesperson. He does not speak for the Onoko Sheriff family. That's one point. Now, secondly, uh, one of the traits that distinguishes us from lesser animals is that we express respect and courtesy to one another. The manner in which he spoke about Amadou Pinik is one that ordinarily in this kind of forum should not be encouraged. Amadou Pinik is a graduate, second class upper from the prestigious University of Benin. And the man who is talking now, Chief Ario Robinson, I hold a degree in philosophy. I hold a degree in law. I am a chief in the kingdom. My area of specialization is jurisprudence. Most of these people talking, they do not really understand what customary law is. You refer to a book. Did you read the book completely? We are talking about history that spans over 500 years. There was a time in history where the Olu of Wari almost ordered the beheading of an Olu Sheriff. Now, it is because we have come in an era of civilization where some of those orders and pronouncements are no longer executed. So for someone to come on national TV and say that the Olu of Wari does not have the powers to derope the local sheriff is to completely miss the fact. In the first place, the position that chief Tansi title was created by an Olu of Wari. The sons of the 70 chiefs that came with Ginoa the first from Benin to establish Wari Kingdom never came with an Olu sheriff. Olu sheriff was never part of the configuration. It was a king, an Olu of Wari, that created out of his personal relationship with the person at that time who was conferred with Olubo Shere. If you look at the number of Olubo Shere's we have, and look at the kings, the number of kings we have, as of today, we have had 21 kings. We have not had up to four or five Olubo Shere at best. For the purpose of argument, let's say we have had seven Olubo Shere. What does that tell you? That tells you that aboriginally, that was not part of the configuration of the kingdom. Furthermore, I wish to state that it's a globally known phenomenon, concept of law, that he who appoints can fire. I repeat, he who has the capacity and the powers to appoint necessarily has the capacity and the power to fire. Now, by this I mean that a king who sits on that throne because the throne itself exists in perpetuity. The powers of the past king is not higher than the powers of the present king. It exists in perpetuity. In other words, Ogyame, he came all these powers in appointing an Olopo Shere. It's not higher than the powers of Ogyame, Atua the third, in derobing that Olopo Shere. I repeat, a person, it is logic. I have said here before now that one of the traits that distinguishes us from lower animals is reason, ability to reason. Now, if we look at it, yes, if we look at it from that trajectory, a king, the Olobo Sheriff family, the powers they have is power of nomination. And that is why Atua the, the second did not, did not, did not make a, an Olobo well, Chief Ario, Chief Ario, if you could just hold on, we want to bring uh, other people into the conversation. If you could just hold on uh, a second. Well, Dede, Dede Mabiaku, good morning. Are you still with us? Yes. Dede Deo, yeah. it's good to see you. Very much so, Ruben. Yes. Well, quickly, uh, you Same know, here, Chief Ario just made a point now, and it's as follows from uh, the details. That when Olu Kenwale appointed Amiri a Yamiri Imami as Yolo Gushere, there were protests, there were demonstrations.
People did not, some people opposed it, the appointment. But then the Olu's will prevailed. Now, uh, another Olu, Atuashe III, says, well, you know, he cannot work with him for obvious reasons in the public domain. So why would one Olu's authority be superior to another Olu's authority? Uh, that's the point Chief Ario was uh, raising. If you could address that quickly. Um, Chief Ario should be careful about certain statements he makes. Because when you talk about um, one Olu to another Olu, you talk about the credibility and positioning of he who takes over. It is very important. Issues have been raised and issues are still being raised about the credibility of the position and, and positionality of the present Olu of worry. We need to talk about these issues. Then court, we don't need to bring and flaunt our dirty linings in public. I was amazed when even before this, Chief Brown Mene came uh, and was, I'm not sorry to use this word, telling lies to the whole world that Shola, who is the present king, by their own inference, did, was not presented in 2015. He was presented in 2015. The oracles rejected. The tradition rejected. Let's be frank about these things. You're bringing him back again this time in another mode, in another package, in another format. Come on, guys. Come on, people. It's not for us to scatter ourselves. It's for us to find a way to reunite this kingdom and make things work better for all of us. Their rules and their guiding tenants. How did we, how did we as a people get the crown? What were the tenants of how we got the crown? It is by oath. And that oath is still standing. Whether they made the extant laws or not, prior to that, the oath was standing and is binding. And these things must be noted. I am tired of what is going on and how they are making this crown a social media joke to the world. Please, guys, this is enough. We need to start respecting who we are now. We'll be without people. We'll not be people like this now. We'll get more values and more treasures with ourselves. One comes on the throne, buys his way in, buys his crown, buys his seat and his throne, and says he's a king of the people, wake up, I beg. Shakir is wake up. Well, rest assured, Mr. Wake Mania. up now. Rest assured. Where are we going? The ah. worry kingdom is not a joke to anybody. I can assure you of that. What would you like to say in response to what you've heard so far? Well, what, what I would just say, it, uh, I, I hear uh, Robin Sinario loud and clear, and uh, it's just one of the efforts, and he's just tried, he made it clear. They've done everything within that their camp to divide the Olubo Sheriff family, and they have failed woefully, woefully, and they cannot divide the Olubo Sheriff family the Olubo Sheriff family made me their spokesman, and I am doing a very good job to their satisfaction and to the chagrin of those on the other divide. And I don't expect the likes of Ario to be happy. And I was talking about titles. I'm not talking about the kind of title. You know, I, I, I try to classify the titles, grade one, grade two, grade three. Grade one is the family titles. Grade two is the community titles. Then grade three is the social titles, and that's where Ario belongs. It's one of the social titles that you can give anybody. You can give a white man. You can, uh, Ibrahim Kefas held one of such social titles, given by Olu of Wari Atuashe II. So social titles can be given to anybody, and that's what Ario is holding. You know, he's from Edo State and all of that. But beyond all of that, you, the Olobosere family, immediately after the purported derobing of Chief Ayrimi Emami as Olobosere, the Olobosere family summoned an emergency meeting three days later and passed a vote of no, a vote of confidence on Chief Ayrimi Emami as the Olobosere of Wari Kingdom. And we said we are going to swim and sink with him because we know the culture, we know the tradition, but we can't go the whole hog now because the matter is in court. By the way, it's not only Ashifa Irimi Imami that is in court. Even the uncle of the uh, present uh, Olu of Wari, 
his cousin, or your wally, they are in court. We have multiple cases. There are other members of the royal family who are challenged. So it's not an Ayiri went to court to exercise his fundamental human right to say the Guinea who are ruling house have no power anywhere in the world to suspend him. And by that, if he wins in his case, meaning that everything, all the processes that led to the crowning of the current Olu of worry, if the court says so, it remains null and void. And we are not in obeisance state of mankind where Chief Ariyo is saying that at a time Anulu ordered the, that uh, Anulu Boshere should be beheaded. He couldn't name that person. But thankfully, we are not in that obeisance state of mankind again. We are in the 21st century. Okay. No Olu of worry, no king anywhere can order anybody to be banished, to be beheaded, or to be messed up. It's not possible. This is 21st century Ariyo. Wake up. Okay. Most importantly, we pray peace returns to Iwere land. Okay, well, I guess the conversation will continue, yeah. uh, but we, we seem to have run out of time. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Len Ayango. Thank, thank you, Dede Mabiaku. And thank you for joining us, Chief Robinson Ariyo.